name is Celine Rikiti. I am a second year medical student at Creighton University School of Medicine and I am also an Arupe Global Scholar. So it's a combined MD and PH program. And so this was a, a very eye-opening trip for me. It's really easy to forget why, why I chose to pursue medicine, um, but it was really for social justice reasons and because of the impact you can have when you meet somebody's need in a moment. And I think I was reminded of that. We were given the opportunity to select from three different sites where we would be doing our research projects for the next couple years. And so we got to choose between the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, and Rwanda. And of course, I begged to come to Rwanda. <laughs> Um, and uh, it, it was just like such a dream come true for me to be able to learn from the people in my own country um, and to go to a world-class university in the hills of Butaro. I just, I couldn't think of a better site to do my research. My name is Zoe Fanning. Um, I'm a second year medical student from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota in the States. Um, and I was a part of the inaugural class of the Global Community-Based Education Program at the University of Global Health Equity. Global health doesn't mean traveling somewhere else and seeing a culture that's totally different from your own or a country that you've never been to. Um, what it really means is taking lessons from different places around the world and from your own community and letting them inform one another. And so I think what this program really helped me to uh, kind of reinforce is this idea that the community can help inform larger uh, policy changes or larger uh, health approaches, things like that at the global level even. And so being able to learn how to interact with the community um, and escalate those voices and take them to places where they can become actionable change is really what I think Global CBE is, is all about. Nawandumujanamawuzima, bakatubaza ibyo dukora turabibabwira hari icyo bumva nabo bakwigiraho bazagenda bagashyikiriza iwa bitewe nuko baba baturutse ahantu hatandukanye bakagishyikiriza iwabo kandi nabo hari icyo baba bakora bumva twe tudakora no bakaba kitubwira tugahuza mu buzima nyine tukubakirana so my name is Rebecca I am born raised in Haiti um, my passion has always been um healthcare um since I I'm a survivor of earthquake that happened in 2010, and from there, I been wanted to really be in the healthcare field. So I went on to pursue my study in like healthcare administration, and then later on become a social worker since I myself was impacted by the traumatic events of that natural disaster. I am currently a student at Boston University. Um, with both school of doing a master program with the school of social work and public health, and I'm glad to be here. <laughs> We came here to learn how technology innovation uh, is being used in access to health services. We came here to learn how drones are being used in Rwanda to improve the health outcomes. And uh, it really connects so much to community health because drones improve access to healthcare, they improve efficiency. And in this global community-based uh, education program, we are really training our students to understand the role of innovation, how you can leverage technology to improve health outcomes, but also really to understand how partnerships are formed to make sure that innovation like this one we are seeing together are in place. Um, so today we learned about everything that Zipline is doing in Rwanda and also really around the world. Um, so we learned about the speed at which they're able to deliver various medications and materials to different hospitals and health centers at various levels and really how that relates to community-based education. And our program is that 
it's a way of getting very modern, very needed medications to lots of different settings and lots of different levels. And it means that people don't necessarily have to make it to a city or make it to a larger hospital, but rather can have access to all of these very necessary medications and other materials in the setting that they are in. The, the community health workers were the highlight of this program. We got to do QI projects um, with four community health workers. So we got to spend a good amount of time going back to the same village and getting to know them and the work they were doing in the community as we designed these projects. And um, their tenacity and commitment to their communities with very little compensation was incredible. Um, and their ability to learn new information and their willingness to serve. I, I was, we were, every day we'd go, we'd be flabbergasted by what we learned and the impact that they were able to have at a local level. I've learned like practical tools in this program, like some public health skills, like how to run a focus group and all that. But I think I was re-centered on the importance of community um, when you're doing all these lofty projects. Um, that they are truly the center, um, they are the focus, they are our greatest teachers. Um, I think I've been reminded to walk in humility and in friendship and without each other we can't accomplish anything. So I think it's, it's grounded me and it's also given me practical skills. We have a wonderful team. I am just I don't think that they could have picked a better group of 10 people <laughs> to be together. I think we all complement each other and you know many of us are medical students, but we all come in with a different perspective on medicine and we have wonderful we have a wonderful midwife, we have a wonderful social worker, public health um, students and so I think we all come with a unique perspective on health um, and community medicine that has made it a really valuable fruitful experience and we've been led by such an incredible team. Uh, Sandra, Grace, Dennis, and Akiki um, have been just incredible in helping to foster an environment where we really feel encouraged to be vulnerable and open and uh, curious, and so it's been a wonderful group to work with. Mukubanga kazi dukora hago tuwa keji, ahubo tuwa raga hugo riwi. Bivuga ngo kuba mwamana utaba abanyeshuri bamanutse bakava hari kuri ra kaminuza y'ubuganga bakaza hano mu midugudu nubundi bukangura mbaga tuba dufata niba maze kubereka uburyo nkora nabo bakananyire ku buryo bakanambaza imbogamizi mpura nazo urumva ari ibintu bintu imbaraga kandi bikananyire ka yuko nahandi hantu baba batuzi yuko hasi mu mudugudu dukora cyo nongeraho rero nuko bashimira cyane kandi nkana basaba kujya baduhora hafi kugira ngo bagire ibyo batubwira bakora natwe tubugire ibyo tubabwira dukora um one of the exercises that we did um on the last day it's like um writing to each other things we admire about it all of my sticky notes um emphasize that i um that my presence is needed um that i should come back and and I think this is kind of like a confirmation for me, just seeing like all the you know, that I um, received, they all mention your service is needed, you are needed. So definitely my takeaway from this program as a whole, it's not only talk the talk, but also walk the talk. As Dr. Kiki mentioned, it really um, emphasizes of the need of, you know, don't just have the vision but put that vision into action so I think this is a big part that I'm gonna keep with me and in everything that I'm you know considering in the future. Uh, for me this is really a very emotional moment for me not only emotional but physically uh, professionally satisfied it's like I have arrived at another stage where I see what I dreamt of what UGHE would be, that it would be the beacon to Korea, would be the beacon to Butaro, to Rwanda, East Africa, Africa and the world. And that you are the ambassadors of the next stage of taking the message of global health to the world. So that makes me feel very privileged and yet gives me a responsibility but tells me that I have all of you as ambassadors. I have the team behind 
mostly the faculty, the faculty in the, in, in the community, the faculty at the university, and the faculty in the hospitals to carry this mission, and that we are holding this together. So I feel, oh, I feel huge. <laughs> I, I can see the realization that we are going to become a thousand, we are going to become a nation. That's how it Having this integrated to several medical schools, nursing school curricula, and uh, the, the concept of social medicine, community-based engagement, inserted to different healthcare professional curricula. That is the big vision that's what, that we have. This is just a seed. We are the only medical school in Rwanda, and probably in the region, that really believe in community-based education. But 10, 20, 30 years from now, when none of us probably will be here, that is the vision. And that's, I'm, I'm really glad Zoe, you brought Paul's memory here. I think that's what he just he taught us. He's no more with us, but his legacy, his vision lives on. Uh, I'm sure you know he's, this started about 45 years ago, 1980s, 1981 to be precise. But 42 years later, look at where we are now. And that's how things ignite. So I'm really, really glad to see all of you go through the past three weeks. I'm sure you have grasped something. And hopefully, how we can also use you as faculty. Can we invite you next year to come and teach with us? Can we engage you to come and do research with us? Can we, can we convince you to continue your quality improvement work with our medical students, with our MGHD students? I would really like to see those comments coming out. On the behalf of the Vice Chancellor, all the staff, the students at UGHG, thank you very much for being with us the past three weeks. And you are now one of us, you are lying. So don't be surprised if you get an email from me or Dr. Akiki. Please help us in this, please support us in this, or please come back. I really hope, wish you have a safe journey back home. Please pass our greetings and thank you to your families and friends for letting you be with us the past three weeks. And thank you very much for being with us. Congratulations, everybody.